What you believe Please. in, as far as I understand it, is actually we need to protect the vulnerable and the rest of us should get on with their lives. You know, is that getting traction amongst certain parts of politicians or, you know, certain countries? Well, certainly the numbers of signatures on, on that website has grown to the point that it uh, is no longer able to display them. Last I looked, it was um, 350,000, um, so it must be um, uh, far in excess of that now. So, yes, people are signing up to it, and really our goal was not so much to say, hey, come and join us, but to say, let's put this on the table and talk about this as an alternative strategy um, in a situation where we are really struggling to find a permanent solution. Uh, suppressing the virus is not a permanent solution, I'm sure everyone will agree with that. Testing, tracking and tracing is proving to be impossible to affect. And also, most importantly, the collateral damage is profound. So we need to find a different solution. And we think the best way to do that is to rely on something we've relied on for a very long time, which is population level immunity. We, the term for it, the technical term for it is herd immunity, but it's when enough people are immune in the population that the risk to the vulnerable people is low enough for them to also resume normal lives. We think this can be yeah. achieved in a period of three to six months, judging from how the epidemic has played out in various parts of the world. If in that short period of time, we concentrate our efforts on protecting the vulnerable and allowing those who are not vulnerable to build up immunity, which is great for everybody, but also allows those who are not vulnerable to protect their right, job, get on with their, lives. their children's right. education, right. everything, right? Pro Professor, I mean, a couple of questions. You know, the first of all is how many people have to die to, to reach herd immunity? And second of all, we don't understand enough about this to, you know, understand the long haul effects of people that haven't recovered, don't die, but are left with legacy COVID for, you know, we don't know how long. So, the, the, yeah, very important question. So how many people have to die to achieve herd immunity is a very important question. And I guess the solution that we're offering is one where hopefully that fraction is very, very low indeed. I mean, we live with a number of infectious diseases and they kill vulnerable people. And we have to accept that that happens. But what we don't want is for this infection while herd immunity is being established to kill vastly more people in excess of that. And we think we can prevent that by putting in place measures to prevent the infection from getting into care homes, better hospital control um, for a, per a short temporary period of time, having vulnerable people um, uh, self-isolate or at least take commensurate prote uh, protective measures. We think we can get that death toll right down. So that's what we are proposing is a way of achieving herd immunity without people dying. Long COVID sufferers, that's something that is well known, a well known and rare uh, outcome of viral infection. And I think while uh, that is something we need to pay attention to at the level of you know, primary health care and also state investment in people who have unfortunately got mm -hmm. this rare disease, it is not a reason to, you know, when you balance it against the 130 million people who will starve to death if we don't do something right now about these restrictions, uh, you can, you know, you can see right. that it's important to keep it effective. Dr. Gupta, we are thrilled to have you on. You are at the absolute cusp and crucible of this debate over cases and death ratio and the debate of the young and the old. Do you put a lot of weight in the case analysis that's going on right now, or should we focus, focus more on the improving death dynamic and calm down? Um, yes, there are lots of problems with um, the analysis of cases. First of all, uh, cases by which people um, mean testing positive for the virus uh, does not actually reflect, it's not an accurate reflection of who is infectious in the community and also depends very much on who you're testing, how much you're testing, and all of that needs to be kind of carefully analysed. So I think we need to stop throwing raw data at people. It should be sent out, it should be made transparent once it's been curated and analysed. 
Um, but really, it, what we're trying to prevent are deaths. We all know that we must, we must be united in that way. We want to prevent deaths. So we need to focus away from this notion that just stopping the spread of the disease is going to prevent deaths. It may do so in, a, in the short term, but in the long term, what we want is the build-up of well, immunity. 